4.1.3 and 4.1.4. We're looking at extraction of metals and reduction, and we're looking at redox reactions. So there's a range of metals that you look at in terms of the reactivity series, and there are some right at the bottom end of the reactivity series that are unreactive. And unreactive metals such as gold or platinum or sometimes silver are found in the earth, but most metals are found as compounds called ores. So ores are metal compounds that contain enough of the metal to make it economic to extract. So you've got to be able to make enough money to extract it, and that would be an ore. Now, most metals are found as ores bonded with oxygen. So for instance, iron ore, which is called hematite, is found as um, iron oxide. Aluminium ore, which is called bauxite, is known as aluminium oxide. You can also get metals that are bonded with sulphur, so you get sulphides. Uh, these have an, uh, an environmental problem because when you burn or when you heat up a metal sulphide, you get sulphur dioxide given off, which causes acid rain. Just be aware of that in terms of an environmental problem of extracting metals. So, how do we extract metals? Well, some metals are unreactive, so they're found on their own. But some metals that are less reactive than carbon are extracted from their ores by reduction with carbon. So iron is a great example of this. Iron oxide is heated in a blast furnace with carbon at high temperature, and the carbon reduces the metal oxide. It's a reducing agent. So we get the metal formed at the end. So we get iron, and the waste product is carbon dioxide. So a reaction involving the loss of oxygen is called reduction. So if something has lost oxygen, it's reduction. Well, if something's lost oxygen, normally something else has gained oxygen. So a reaction involving the gaining of oxygen is called oxidation. We already know that from 4.1.1 oxidation reactions. So when you put those reactions together in a, in a reaction where something is, is lost, oxygen is lost and gained, then it's called a redox reaction. So when a reaction is a redox reaction, in, there is an oxidation part and a reduction part. In an oxidation reaction, electrons are lost. So we call that oxidation is loss of electrons. We come up with the acronym OIL. And in a reduction reaction, electrons are gained. We call that RIG. Reduction is gain of electrons. And if you put them together, Redox reactions can be remembered by being oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So now we're introducing uh, redox and, and reactions, and within a reaction there's two things going on. There's a reduction part and an oxidation part. You need to be confident that you know what the different types of equations are. You'd be able to know if it asks you for a word equation, you write the words, not the symbols. If you ask for a symbol equation, make sure you put the symbols and not the words. So don't put carbon dioxide if it's a simple equation, you write CO2. Then you need to know about balanced equations, where the number of atoms on the reactants equals the number of, of atoms on the product side, because no atoms are lost in a chemical reaction. But then you need to be able to explain half equations. Half equations are where just half of the equation is represented. So if it was a redox reaction, half equation would just be the reduction part or the oxidation part. And finally, you need to know about ionic equations. Ionic equations are where ions gain or lose electrons to form um, molecules. So in electrolysis, you'll come across chloride ions, Cl-, losing electrons to form chlorine molecules, Cl2. You'll find hydrogen ions, H+, gaining electrons to form hydrogen molecules, H2. So the equations are quite tricky, you'll need to do a bit of extra work on them. Watch all the videos in this series, if you're still struggling, then leave a comment and we can get back to you.